of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Dear Jesus, we magnify your glorious name, the name that is above every name. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. You are the Christ. King of kings, Lord of lords, you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Joy of the angels, wonder of the shepherds, treasure of Mary's heart, son of man, son of God, glory of the Father, brightness of eternal life, King of righteousness, son of righteousness, they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Precious Redeemer, abiding Savior, righteous Judge, merciful perfect Peacemaker, priceless Peace, mighty Liberator, glorious Victor, O Great I Am, Bread of Life, Light of the World, Door of the Sheep, Good Shepherd, Way, Truth, and Life, Most Powerful, Most Holy, most gentle, most loving, peace of God, power of God, founder and perfecter of faith, rest for our souls, our strength and our stronghold, our refuge in the day of trouble, mystery of God, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge, master of the apostles, teacher of the disciples, preacher to the hungry, healer of the sick, O Lamb, you are worthy to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Dear Jesus, yours is the name that is above every name. Before your name every knee bows in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confesses that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, 
by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As an ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain. be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, the Father, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life to us. Grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of our Lord's resurrection may be raised from death of sin by your life-giving Spirit, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of God's Word. first lesson comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 25. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, a rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him, that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. 
This is the word of the Lord. We read the gradual responsively. Christ has risen from the dead. God the Father has crowned him with glory and honor. He has given him dominion over the works of his hands. He has put all things under his feet. Our second lesson comes from 1 Corinthians chapters 15. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received in which you stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we preach and so you believed. Now if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain, and your faith is in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God, because we testified about God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins then those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in Christ we have hope in this life only, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. This is the word of the Lord. Be Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. <laughs> Gospel of the Lord according to St. Mark, the 16th chapter. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb, and they were saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were alarmed. And he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. You may be seated for the hymn.
grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Please be seated. The text from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. These words. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. In the name of Jesus, dear friends. Just two days ago, many of you gathered for worship on what is called Good Friday. Certainly was a good day for us, for it was the day when Jesus finished, completed the work required for our salvation, the day on which he paid the wages of sin. For Jesus himself, the day was not what we would call a good day. Early that morning, he was brought before Pilate. He was falsely accused of starting a riot, of stirring up the people, of inciting rebellion against the Roman authorities. And even though Pilate knew that Jesus had done nothing wrong, he had him beaten, crowned with a crown of thorns, and shamefully mistreated. And as is usually the case, the more Pilate yielded to the crowd's demands, the more they wanted. Crucify him, crucify him, that was their cry. And Pontius Pilate, fearing the authorities, gave the order. You remember how he was made to carry his own cross to the place where he would be nailed to it outside the city walls. It was a horrible event. Even nature rebelled. There was an earthquake. Darkness covered the whole land from noon until three o'clock. It was at that time that Jesus exclaimed, it is finished and breathed his last, saying, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And he died. Two of the disciples had summed up the feelings of many, the disappointment. We had hoped he would deliver Israel, but now he's dead. It seemed hopeless. But only two short days later, things really began to change again. It was early in the morning when the women left Jerusalem to go to the tomb. There was a sense of gloom and despair. Remember, they weren't going to celebrate a resurrection. They were going to finish a burial, which had been hastily started a couple of nights before. So imagine their shock and surprise when they were met by an angel who said to them, as we heard in our gospel, don't be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth who is crucified. He is risen. He's not here. See the place where they laid him. And then everything happened very quickly on that glorious morning. The gospel accounts tell us that Mary Magdalene saw Jesus at the tomb. Jesus appeared to the women as they were hurrying to Jerusalem to tell the others what had happened. Peter and John ran to the tomb to see if this incredible story could be true. And it's true. The tomb was empty. They didn't see the risen Christ at that time. Late that afternoon, on the same day, Jesus joined two disciples as they were on their way to Emmaus. And as they walked together, he explained to them that it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to die and to rise again from the dead. And then it was at that evening meal as he broke bread that their eyes were opened and they recognized this was the Christ. And they ran back to Jerusalem to tell the others who were by now locked in a, in a room, huddled together, to tell them what had happened. And while they were still speaking, we're told the Lord came and stood among them and said, Peace be unto you. It is I, myself. And in a moment, everything changed. Sorrow turned to joy, disappointment to hope, the fear of death to the reality of new life. The Bible sums it up like this. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. What a contrast from just a couple of days before. 
Well, we're here again this morning celebrating Easter. And I welcome all of you, especially those who are visiting with family and friends. And to any others who may be here for the first time or who have no church home, we're certainly privileged to be able to celebrate this resurrection with you. We hope to see you again. You know, it's true that we usually see things more clearly in contrast. White always is whiter against a black background. You know, and light is brighter in a dark room. Even joy is fuller when it follows sorrow. And so too, we can see and appreciate Easter more fully by asking, what if there were no Easter? I mean, what if Christ be not raised from the dead? This is the contrast that the Apostle Paul sets before us in this epistle lesson. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain, useless. The resurrection of Christ is a central teaching of the Christian faith. Any preacher or teacher who denies or questions or casts doubt on the resurrection really has nothing to say worth listening to. In other words, as Paul said, his preaching or teaching is useless or in vain. Another translation says it like this, if Christ did not rise, your preaching means nothing. Building churches and schools, educating pastors and teachers, sending out missionaries, telling little children about Jesus, all of these things would be nothing if Christ did not rise from the dead. Also, if Christ has not been raised, your faith is in vain. The confession of faith that we make in our creed week after week as we gather here for worship, I believe in the resurrection of the body, we say. It would be meaningless if Christ has not been raised. And furthermore, Paul says, we are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified about God that he raised Christ whom he did not raise, if it's true that the dead are not raised. One who misrepresents the truth or lies is a false witness. Paul had talked about the power of God. He had said that God loves all people, <coughs> proclaimed that Jesus died for our sins, and that there's even a glorious place in heaven for all of us believers in Christ Jesus. However, if Christ is not raised, then all these words mean nothing. Or worse, they're false, and he's a liar. And what's more, if Christ has not been raised, you're still in your sins. One of the most comforting truths of Scripture is the assurance that our sins have been forgiven on account of Christ. Such full and free forgiveness our Lord offers to all who believe in him, to all who trust in him. No one who comes to him will be cast out. Jesus certainly showed this to be true to many that he came in contact with throughout his earthly ministry. Remember the woman who was caught in adultery and dragged before him, judged by those who brought her. She heard his words of forgiveness and his admonition to go and sin no more. The tax collectors considered lowlifes among some and other manifest sinners were forgiven and called to follow him. Peter, who denied him not once, but three times, swearing that he didn't know him, he was reduced to tears with a look, a look of love and forgiveness from Christ as he was led away to be crucified. And one of the thieves on the cross, crucified with him, railed at him until he saw how he suffered, saw how concerned he was for those gathered there on that day. 
And then that thief repented and pleaded, Lord, remember me. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. And our Lord's reply was, today you will be with me in paradise. Such forgiveness, such comfort has been our hope day in and day out. For we know that we too have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We too have denied Christ by our words or by our actions. Scripture tells us if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, He, that is Jesus, is faithful and just and forgives our sins and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. However, if Christ is not raised, then we are still in our sins. That is unforgiven, under the wrath of God, doomed, without hope. And our text goes on to say, those who have fallen asleep, in other words, those who have already died in Christ, have perished. In other words, they're lost. Many of our loved ones and friends, we have laid them to rest in the certain hope of the resurrection. After all, Jesus himself said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he died, yet shall he live, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. But again, as Paul says, if Christ is not raised, all of this teaching, all of this hope, all of this forgiveness is but an illusion. Then comes the but in our text. If in Christ we have hope in this life only, we are of all people to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Paul is absolutely certain of this truth. He had talked with people who had seen Jesus many times after he rose. You know, on that very day of his resurrection, he showed himself on 11 different occasions to others. The resurrection is witnessed to many, many times in the New Testament. One time he showed himself, as we heard in our lesson, to over 500 people at the same time, many of whom were still alive, many of whom could have refuted that truth had it not been true. It was not a made up story. It was not a dream. It was not an illusion. Christ had for sure risen from the dead. The Lord had done what he said he would do. He had conquered death. Christ has risen. He has risen indeed. Try that again. Christ has risen. He has risen indeed. And so our preaching is not in vain. And we're not false witnesses or liars. Our faith is not meaningless. Our sins are forgiven on account of him. And those who have died believing in Jesus are in the fullness of glory with him, gathered around the throne of grace, waiting for that day when we will one day rejoin them to sing God's praises forever. The question for us, the question for our generation is, do you believe it? Do you believe this to be true? I pray that that's the case for each and every one of you. But the truth is, whether you believe it or not, it doesn't really change or nullify the fact that Christ's resurrection is history, and ours will be also. It is written, an hour is coming when all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and come out those who have done good to the resurrection of life, and those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment. Blessed are those who believe in Jesus. They can shout with the Apostle Paul, thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, way back in the 80s, there was a movie. The title was E.T. Some of you may remember E.T. was a, an alien being, a gentle alien being that got trapped on earth. And a young family kind of took him in, or a young boy actually took him in. Well, one day a young dad took his four-year-old son to see that movie. And 
when it seemed that E.T. had died, that four-year-old was inconsolable. He cried and wept. But soon in the film, E.T. came alive. And then everything was okay. The little boy stopped crying, and everything was just fine. Well, they went to see the film a second time. And this time, when E.T. died, the little boy didn't even let out a whimper. He rather looked to his dad and said, it's okay, he'll be alive again. He knew the end of the story. There was nothing to fear. There was nothing to worry about. You know, we as believers in Jesus know the end of the story. There's nothing to fear. There's nothing to worry about. We've seen it in the death and resurrection of our Lord who is the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. This one who has overcome death says to you and to me, because I live, you will live also. These are the words of our risen Lord. We can count on them. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Join with me in singing hymn number 475. Hymn 475. and confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in the visible and invisible, and in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God,
In our prayers this morning, we remember the family and friends of Lynn Troike, who will receive Christian burial this next week on Thursday. We remember those who are recovering from illness and suffering in other ways. Chris McKinnon, Landon Zellick, Dave Hasslinger, Rick Allerman, David Pedersen, and Gail Groth and her family. We pray. We pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus, for all people according to their needs. Father in heaven, you raised your Son, Jesus Christ, from the dead as the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Fill all your baptized people with joy, the joy of his victory, and send us forth as witnesses to the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lover of mankind, prosper your gospel wherever it is preached throughout the world, that it may give and sustain faith in all who hear it, delivering them from the power of darkness and bringing them into the joyful kingdom of your risen Son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of glory, your Son established your church to be a refuge of peace in a troubled world. Raise up servants for your church in every place who will devote their lives to the spread of the gospel and the service of your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. King of the nations, remember in your kindness all who bear authority in our land. Give them wisdom and integrity that they may serve our people according to your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rock of refuge, in every time of need, Hear the prayers of those who call upon you in times of distress, especially those who are lonely and homebound, the sick, the dying, the mourning. We remember the family and friends of Lynn Troike. We remember Chris McKinnon and Landon and Dave, Rick and David. And we remember Gail. Pastor Groth and their family. May your son ever be for them, their joy in sorrow, their health in sickness, their life in death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bountiful giver of all things, your son has prepared a feast of forgiveness and life for his people. Grant to all who come to his altar today a faithful share in his unending life. Lord, in your mercy, hear Amen. our prayer. God of the living, receive our thanks this day for all your servants who have departed this life in faith and who now rest from their labors. Bring us by your grace to share with them in the triumph of your resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear Amen. our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated as we continue with the gathering of our offering.
rise for the offertory. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. But chiefly we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the very Paschal Lamb which was offered for us and has taken away the sins of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and saying, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. This do as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
we rise for the post-communion canticle? Thank the Lord and sing His praise. Tell everyone what He has done. And everyone. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. We implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We join responsively with the acclamation at the end of your bulletin. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heaven. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Amen. Amen. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Praise Him with trumpet sound. Praise Him with lute and harp. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Praise Him with tambourine and dance. Praise Him with strings and pipe. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Praise Him with sounding cymbals. Praise Him with loud crashing cymbals. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. Let everything that has breath Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat>